Hi, I'm Jane Hilsden, marketing consultant and founder of Dragonfly Marketing. Welcome to this episode of the How To Do Marketing Show, a no-nonsense podcast about marketing for small business. It's our mission at Dragonfly Marketing to put marketing on the agenda for every regionally based small business in Australia. Why? Because we know that when marketing is done properly, it can help your business grow. We believe small businesses are the backbone of our nation. When your business grows, it benefits not only you and your family, it benefits your whole community. Small businesses create a vibrant and connected economy. We employ local people, we donate to local charities, and we work together to build resilient and thriving communities. The How To Do Marketing Show is a podcast just for you and your small business. Bursting with marketing insight and information, this show will be a fabulous resource to help you know all there is to know about the topic of marketing for small business. I'm chatting to Christian Trujillo today, founder of Creative Creations TV. Before founding his video production agency, Christian, an engineer who also holds a double degree in business studies and computer science, worked as a business consultant with PwC. So in 2007, Christian, originally from Chile, settles in Australia. He spends six months learning the language while cleaning toilets, lands a job with an online TV channel and discovers his passion for videography. He now combines his engineering background, business experience and talent for videography to offer professionals a unique approach to video productions that ensures their videos not only look great, but align to their business goals and strategy. Very important. I met Christian when I first did his video strategy workshop in Sydney. I learned a lot about how to produce professional videos. And today, Christian is going to share some of this insight around how to make a video that will do your brand and business proud by creating a professional impression from the get-go. We are going to cover equipment needed, the essential ingredients of what makes a good video, ideal lengths of video, planning considerations, how to bring the best out in the people that you get to star in your video, and much, much more. So let's kick off. Christian, why do you love video? And why do you think it's such an important form of content for small businesses to include in their marketing? Well, I love video because uh, video allows you to capture reality uh, in a different way. Uh, video allows you to get a different perspective of, of, of reality, of a business, of, of a situation out there. Um, and so video is, is one of, is, is the only medium available today that can engage in the three ways that we communicate as humans, you know, uh, in a auditorily, visually, and kinesthetically as well. So video allows you to convey emotions like no other medium available. So if you think about all the other mediums available, all of them can cover only two areas of communication that could be visual or auditorily, uh, but none of them can cover all the three of them. So I think that video is one of the most effective way to communicate. Uh, and especially today, you know, uh, you can use video to communicate with your audience and engage with your clients in a more effective way. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you. So where and how can businesses best use video? So video can help you not only in marketing and sales. So we can use video for marketing, sales, but also for internal purposes. So video can actually replace any type of communication that we have within the business. Uh, and this could be externally with any uh, you know, clients, suppliers, but also internally with all the stakeholders of the business, employees, you know, management, uh, leadership, staff members. So video, you know, as a communication tool, you know, can help you, for example, you know, to, to present a quote or a proposal. Video can help you, you know, to promote your next event. Video can help you to inspire and motivate, motivate your staff. You can use video to drive culture within the organization. So it's not only a sales and marketing tool where you can, you know, engage and inspire and persuade clients to buy from your services, but also you can use this, you can use it in any other area of the business. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. 
And so before everybody starts whipping out their smartphones and starts filming um, their next staff communication or their, their next little message on social media, can you talk us through, say, three planning considerations that, that we need to think about before we actually start filming or we start making the movie, so to speak? I think that one of the things that we forget when, we're, when, when we start producing video is that we need to focus on our ideal client. And I think that's the first consideration. Before you start doing anything for marketing purposes, you have to think about who's your audience. So who is that audience that will be receiving that message? And I think that when we do that, most of the time we focus on, on, on their needs only. But also, I think there, is, there needs to be an alignment between our core values as a business with our ideal client's uh, core values. So we need to analyze our ideal clients, and then from there, identify you know, the values and the standards, and then this will define the quality and the look and feel of my video, so then I can engage the right audience. So number one, be very clear about your ideal client. Yeah. Number Number two, I think that we need to be very clear on the purpose of the video. So we want to engage a certain audience, but what is the reason we want to connect with them? So what is the message? And I think that here there is also a big, something very important to consider because like on social media, uh, people only consume content that is either entertaining or educational. So why do we want to put videos on social media to entertain? or to educate and showcase our, our expertise. So what happens is that when we identify the purpose of our video, then we know that we are not after followers. We're after ideal clients who want to buy our services. So number one, identify you know, your ideal client. Number two, be very clear and specific about the purpose of that video. And I think number three, it's very important that we, we learn how to do it properly. Yeah. Uh, it's very important to understand how video works because we all know that video is important but not many people really understand how it works so then by understanding how it works we can clear, clearly identify the equipment we need the process we need to go through to ensure that the videos we put out there they don't work against us yes so how do you mean like how it works like how it's filmed or how people consume it yeah i mean it, it, all the aspects of of I mean, we know that video is important, right? But we don't know why video is so effective. And I think that when we understand the different elements of video and how video, you know, engage the audience, yeah. then we can understand that the videos we're producing are actually doing their work. Uh, many people are just putting videos out there for the sake of putting videos out there, and they're not considering elements like quality, like the look and feel, the message so you know some experts say that the message is the most important thing and we should just put video up videos out there my approach is that quality is, is equally important as the yeah. message, uh, because that represents your standards as a business so it will attract your clients with the same with the same standards to your business so uh, there are different elements that we need to consider so then when we produce the content we know exactly what to do. You know, yeah. it's like we we'll watch a video and we say, oh, I don't like that video. I, I don't like that. But we don't really know why. We're just having a reaction. So there is a psychological reaction behind every video we watch. So understanding how that works will allow me to produce the right videos for my business. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> With this, with the COVID nineteen situation, you would have seen this as as well. You know, everybody has suddenly jumped online, jumped on Zoom, jumped on their smartphone. You know, Microsoft Teams, and they're creating videos that that might just be consumed internally. You know, it might just be an internal meeting. It might just be some you know a message that they're sending internally. But a lot of people are creating videos that they're actually publishing um, because they can um, and because that's how we kind of need to communicate now. Do you think after this that there's going to be, you know, you, you spoke about quality and professionalism. 
do you think there's going to be greater acceptance from people for stuff, for videos that, that look a little bit more off the cuff or a little less kind of polished now that we've just been exposed to so many people and kind of, I guess, what you would call fairly average videos compared to, compared to what you could get produced professionally? Do you think there'll be a greater acceptance or do you, do you think it's still important to, to now focus on, on producing good quality videos? I think that over time, you know, we have seen this evolution, especially on social media, right? So every day is more acceptable to have a video that is not as sharp or as professionally produced. However, professional videos will always win, okay? Because, yeah, we might accept it, but that doesn't mean that if suddenly you see a highly professional video here next to yours, you, people will go for the one that looks more professional because that would be more aligned to their values and standards. So it's very important to consider that, yeah, in, in a market where we are all competing for attention, if we have the same video with the same message, with the same, you know, everything, and one of them is higher quality, the higher quality video will always attract clients or audiences with higher standards. Yes. So that will not change, you know? So, if the whole market, this whole industry go low quality, yeah, we will adjust. But as soon as someone comes in between with a high quality video, that video will attract the audiences with higher standards. Yes, yes, that's very true. And, and on that note, when it comes to creating videos, because a lot of small businesses, you know, their marketing budgets are fairly tight. So they don't have, you know, loads of, of marketing investment to be able to kind of produce Hollywood style um, movies, particularly if they're, um, or even, you know, invest in, in a regular um, professional output of, of videos, particularly if they're going to be using these videos on a daily or weekly or even monthly basis. What do you recommend when it comes to video production? Do you think it's necessary for us to, to outsource to the professionals? Or do you think there are some circumstances where, where small business owners can do these videos themselves and still look professional, as, as you were talking about? My advice is always, if you have the budget to outsource everything to someone who actually study to do this professionally, do it. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I'd have to agree with that, particularly from a marketing point of view. Yeah, uh, fair point, have, fair point. Have, so if you have the budget, or you have a professionally trained team members, just let them do it because they know what they're doing. Now, in terms of you know, a, a small business with limited budget, my advice is always, there are some videos that must be produced by a videographer, and there are other videos that can be produced by ourselves, okay? So when it comes to video, uh, I always say video has three components, you know, the message, the look and feel, and the quality of the video. And all of these elements are equally important. So 33% of your video is the message. 33% is the look and feel, and 33% is the quality. So if you don't have all these three, these three elements, then probably you will always be missing out on something with a video. However, when you produce educational videos, like expert advice that you will share on social media, the most important part of those videos is the message because you're giving value. It is a marketing video, but it's not really. You are giving value, right? So you're giving expert advice. When you give expert advice, the message is the most important part, which means that with the right tools and techniques, and if you learn how to do it properly, those videos can be done by you, okay? However, there are other videos that are just marketing videos, right? When you think about your company profile video, when you think about your, your case studies from successful stories of your you know, clients, my advice is that those videos should always be done by a videographer because they understand you know, how to use the, the music, the sound, the colors, the images to persuade your audience uh, and, and, and portray your image in the right way. Uh, if you do this in, incorrectly, if you are not sharing your values and standards in the right way through your profile videos and case studies, you have the risk to give the wrong image, attract the wrong audience, and even 
no attract the people you want to work with. Gosh, that's so true. And I know even for us as a, as a marketing consultancy, um, you know, when we're working with small businesses, we absolutely bring in the videographers to um, record and, and we call them brand videos um, or those kind of promotional style videos. As you said, where you're trying to kind of put together a, a professional looking high quality story um, and, and these videos will generally have a little bit more shelf time. So, you know, they'll probably sit on the website and be consumed by a lot of people and they'll, they'll, they'll last a couple of years. So it's worth the investment. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but the kind of day-to-day -day kind of getting on LinkedIn and sharing some expertise, I think that's a really, really good point that you make. The video becomes about the message and the content as opposed to the the look and feel and the branding components. I think that's a really good point. So, okay, so if people go great, um, we want to do some of our you know more message focused videos um, and produce these for social media. You know, we're going to do them on a weekly rhythm or a couple of times per week. We still want them to look professional. We don't want them to look you know homemade in inverted commas. What equipment would you recommend that people invest in if they're, if they're going to kind of really incorporate regular video into their marketing? Great. So I think that, well, we need a camera, right? But <laughs> I think that my advice is always, if you are not doing this professionally, just use your smartphone because your smartphone comes with a high-definition camera. So your smartphone is smart enough to do certain things that the DSLR camera needs to be programmed to do. So if you don't have any video experience, use your smartphone because that's a good enough quality camera. Uh, having a tripod is a must, okay? So I, as a rule, we should never film without a tripod. Never use your hand, your hand healthy, because first of all, you cannot frame properly, and then you are moving around and it's distracting and then it, it restricts your, your arms to move, okay? So the tripod is a mask and then you need, of course, the camera holder. I think I have something like this, right? So okay. this, yep. this tripod is a hundred, $100, right? And this here is just a camera holder that costs $20 on eBay, yeah. right? So for $120, you can have a tripod like that where you put your phone and then you're ready. So having this will allow you to have, for example, here, you just stand in front and you give your, you know, the flexibility to, to deliver your message. And for those um, people who are listening, um, I'll actually put a camera of, oh, sorry, I'll actually put a photo of that tripod in the show notes so you can see what he's, he's talking about. It's a very, very simple piece of equipment. Yeah, so the tripod is a must. Then you need a lapel microphone. So I always recommend the use of lapel microphones because that will, you know, minimize the noise. Uh, but then the lights are very, very important, very important because the, the quality of your videos will depend on the light that you have available more than the camera. So you might have the most amazing camera, but if you don't have light there, the quality is going to be low. So make sure you have enough light. And for that, I always recommend things like this. Right? So this is a soft box. Yep. Right? That you buy on eBay and they cost you around $150 at this time. They went expensive. And you can buy, buy a pair of them for $150. And again, for those who are on audio only, they kind of look like movie lights, like how you would imagine movie lights. They're like a big kind of box light with a, um, it's almost like a sheer piece of fabric over the top of them and they're, and they're on, a, on a tripod. And I've seen, I've seen them, I've done Christian's video course a couple of times and I've seen them in action that, you know, fold up and, and I think they're quite portable. Am I, am I correct there? Yes, and the great things about that is that they, are, they give you soft light, which means that, uh, you, can, you know, it, it makes you look 20 years younger. And we all want that. Oh, we all want that. Can we <laughs> just have that to cut, bring around in our handbag? <laughs> That's great. Lights is, is very important. Uh, I think the, those are the basics, you know, lights, microphones, uh, and a tripod. Uh, okay. Yeah, microphone, tripod as well. Yeah. But okay. then you can have other tools like a, like a teleprompter 
for example, which is um, a tool that allows you to, uh, to read your scripts from your phone. In case you want to use a teleprompter, if you want to write a script, you can put the app on your phone, and, and then you can copy your script on your phone, and then you can play the script, and the app will record video of you as you read the script. Yes, yes, tricky. Now, um, what I might even do, Christian, because I know that, um, and if you're happy for me to, I know you've got like a little a, equipment kit for under $500 that you recommend for people. Is it all right if I include the, the uh, link to those products in the show notes for this? Yes. Yeah, so, well, you can, on my website, I have a page with just resources. Oh, perfect. You can go there. I can give you the link. And then from there, I have links to every place where you can just go and buy, you know, your lighting and your apps and things like that. Oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not associated with any brand. I just did my research and I think that they are great. So they're there for you to go and check on online all these different tools that you can use. Oh, fantastic. Great. That saves us doing all the research. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got our equipment. Now, if it's not just us that are going to star in the video, perhaps we've got some camera shy people or perhaps we want to, um, you know, include a, 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 an array of people in our videos. Who do we choose to put into our videos? So, so our talent, as they're called. Yes. Can you help us plan who we choose to include in our videos? particularly if we plan to feature real people because in small business a lot of the time like as a marketing consultant I actually recommend that they do include the real people behind their business uh, but there's obviously a particular type of, of person we're kind of looking for there that will kind of pop and, and radiate on on video what what do we need to consider when we plan who's going to star in our videos Yes. Yeah, so first of all, we have to remember that people buy people people buy from people. We don't buy from businesses. So that's why it's so powerful to have real people in our videos. Uh, if we think about a, a small business um, and we are developing a video to showcase our business, uh, whoever is the face of that business, whoever is the person that's going to be recognized as the leader or the expert of that business should be the face of that video. Right. If your business is selling products, not services, so if you're talking about products, um, yeah, you can use anyone within the business or you can hire a talent, like a pay, you know, a TV presenter or, or actor or actress to deliver the piece of content. Uh, but if you are, want to show leadership and expertise, you sh my advice is to use the person who is going to be the face of the business. Um, for example, if you have many consultants within your business, you can use different consultants for different businesses to provide advice. Uh, if you are developing like a case study or testimonial video, uh, you want to use, of course, your clients. But then again, you want to film your client at their location. So you always, again, you need to go back and think about, okay, who's my ideal client? What is the purpose of this video? Uh, and then you will clearly identify which person should do the delivery of the content. Now, how do we prepare this person for, for the delivery? I think that um, it's very important. I mean, we don't want to be on camera because we know that whatever we do is going to stay there for a long time. <laughs> Basically, we don't want to make a fool of ourselves in front of the camera because that's going to be recorded, right? So as videographers or as directors, we have to ensure the person that, you know, uh, the way they will look when the video is done. So that will give them confidence. Uh, for example, it's very important to show previous examples. Like if you're trying to get a client to do a testimonial video, show them something you did before that and say, look, we have done this already. And that person in that video was never on camera before. Or if you're using a videographer, ask the videographer to give you samples of similar work. So then they will see how they will potentially look uh, in, in their video. 
But then again, I mean, with video, I mean, we don't want a perfect message. We want a honest message, right? So we don't want a perfect delivery. And that's something we all need to understand that with video, it's all about, you know, being yourself. Um, just share, share from, from your heart what you believe is true. Yeah. Any context of, of an interview or even if you're reading a script. If you don't believe in what you're saying, I would say don't do it. Yeah, yeah. And, and what about, so, so say, for example, you've got um, an example of a client who is the perfect, um, like as a business and as an organisation is the perfect example of a client and the one that you want to attract more of, but the person that you need to interview or the person that you need to put on video there, or it could even be a staff member that you've got within your business, but they're not great in terms of delivering you know, a, a, and articulating a message or they don't have a great camera personality or like, do we need to consider that? Do we reject those people from our video or do we just try and kind of work with those people in the, in the idea that they're real um, and, and people might relate to them or do we try and go for, for someone who might be a bit more engaging on, on video? Oh. So interviewing is a skill. So I always say when, you, when I see a bad interview or, uh, or a person delivering an interview that is not great, I put the whole responsibility in the person who is doing the interview. Yes. I okay? Know. So it's the skill of the videographer of whoever is interviewing to make that person look great. So it's not the responsibility to be great on camera because we were not born with that ability, right? So there's a whole... I mean, if the person is willing to give you an interview, you, you can make that person look great and help her deliver at their best. If the person is not willing to do it, then there's nothing you can do about it. Yes. Okay? So, but if the person is willing to do it, then you can help her. If you have the right tools and the right experience, you can guide them through the process to deliver. Because what happened, we, I mean, unless you have a disability that you cannot talk uh, we whenever we're in a very comfortable com comfortable space we can talk normally we talk with friends we talk with our partners with our children with colleagues so the interview is no is, is nothing different than that so it's about the interviewer creating the right safe space for the interviewee to just express themselves openly and that's a skill for the interview Viewer. Yeah, that's a great point. Great point. Um, fantastic. Now, what about like physically? Do we need to look, you know, wear certain things or recommend that people wear certain things with them when they're being filmed? Is it a good idea to, to wear makeup? And that's a question for, you know, males and females. I know there's a lot of males on TV that, that wear foundation or, you know, bits of bits and bobs to make themselves pop. Are there any kind of no-nos or any kind of recommends in terms of, 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 you know, clothing and makeup and hair and those sorts of things? Absolutely. So I always say, look, when you produce a video and you put it on social media, you're exposing your image to the world, right? So you put a video out there, uh, you have millions of people, you know, watching at you. So you have to think that within those that group of people, maybe you, you will be talking straight, straight to your ideal client, to the most important client or to that investor that can change your business forever. So my question to people is, how would you dress for the most important meeting that will transform your business? How would you dress to meet that potential client that can give you the $1 million you know, sale? The same, way, the same way you dress for those important meetings is how you should dress for all your videos. Yes. So always be professional. You know, never be like, you know, use your gym gear or like many people today, they look like they're in their pajamas, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't change anything. You're still talking to a professional audience, so we have to keep it professional. Yes. Uh, it's very important, you know, very important that we remember that that, that ideal client, that investor could be there watching. Yes. So we have to dress in that way. And with the makeup, it's the same thing. 
you know, for female, like how will you try, how will you, do you make up for that meaning? Um, so yeah, in terms of uh, uh, the way we dress, very important, keep it professional, uh, keep it simple, don't do anything different. I always suggest you, you try first, you know, whether it's your makeup or the, if you wanna try something, just try it first, put it there, record it, and then you test it, you know? So don't just do all your makeup and go into camera, do it the day before and see how it looks. And remember that the lights always change, you know? So if you do it at nine in the morning, it's not the same to do it at 5 p.m. So all those different elements are very important to consider. With makeup, you know, I'm not a, an expert, but I've worked with a lot of people in the industry. Uh, it's very important to, to go to stay with natural colors, you know, uh, it's always uh, important. Um, it's important as well uh, to focus on one area of your face. It could be your eyes or your lips or your mouth. Uh, I suggest the eyes because you want people looking at your eyes as you are delivering your content. Um, what else with that? Uh, but test it. That, that's, that's my advice. Uh, always, I mean, for men, you can use, you know, um, some um, uh, lip moisturizer. It's always uh, good ah, for that. Good. Foundation. When you use foundation, this is for girls and, and guys. I mean, make sure that you, you, your hands look the same color, you know, or, or your neck also looks the same color. Sometimes you put on your face, but not on your hands. Um, oh, uh, God, I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah, right. And I guess, you know, and, it, and if you're a person that doesn't wear a lot of makeup and, and that's not your thing, well, it, you know, that's absolutely fine as, as well. And, and, and the point that you're making really is, is how do you normally show up? What is the best version of your, yourself, your appearance? Um, show up that way on, on video. I love it. But again, I mean, the camera will distort your image a little bit, you know, ah. so you look more flat on camera. We look more flat on camera. So it's very important to, to test it. Like if you wear no makeup, well, do a video without makeup and then see how you look and then go back, put a bit of makeup, something very soft, and then test it again and just compare. Because yes. maybe the way you look with makeup on the video is the way you perceive yourself when you're not on video. So maybe you need to do a little bit of that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good point. Very good point. Um, okay. So when we look at the different types of videos that we can produce, what, what's the difference between a promotional video versus an educational video versus a brand video versus a, you know, information video? And, and when should we use, when should businesses use each one? I think we need, I mean, my approach is that we need all of them, right? So in the way I present this, I say, before buying from us, our clients want to know three things. Are we the expert? Who are we and why should they buy from us? And can they trust us? So we need to find a way to answer those three questions with video, okay? So I always say that if we answer the question that we are the expert, that's going, that is going to generate leads. If we answer the question, you know, um, who are we and why they should buy from us, that's brand awareness. And if we answer the question that they can trust us, that's conversion rates. So I say that video can help us in three areas, to increase lead generation, to increase brand awareness, and to increase conversion rate. So we need to find videos for each of these categories for marketing and sales. So for lead generation, we know now that we need to you know, um, answer the question that we are the expert. However, we cannot say, I'm the expert, right? And that's one of the big mistakes that companies make. Or they say, I want to produce a promotional video to increase the generation. That doesn't work because we cannot promote ourselves to show expert expertise. So the way we show expertise is by producing educational expert videos, right? So the educational videos are the ones that will, will show that we are the expert, and they, those are the ones that will help us increase lead generation. Yeah. Those videos are for social media, right? You put them on social media, you put them on YouTube, 
you send them out in your newsletter, in your, you know, your, your email marketing campaign, and that's how you engage with people, right? Because once people identify you as the expert because of all the value you have shared with those videos, they will want to find out more, okay? Or if they have the need to some of your services, they will want to find out more and they will come to your website. Then on your website, you need to answer the question who you are and why they should do business with you. And that's your profile video. That could be your profile video, company video, or brand video. And that's the video that you know, ex ex shows your values, your standards, it mentions your services, your purpose for being in business, right? So after I know that you are the expert, after I know who you are and why I should buy from you, then I want to know if I, if I can trust you. So how do we do that? With case studies. And these are the videos where we go to our clients and we interview success stories of clients, right? So case studies are also to be placed on our website. So profile videos and case studies on our website and the educational videos on social media. So those are the three main type of videos that I suggest for a marketing strategy that we need to produce and they have to be placed in different places. We don't use the profile video to increase lead generation. We use the profile video to increase brand awareness. Yeah. We don't use the case studies or the client testimonial videos to increase lead generation. We use those to increase our conversion rates. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent breakdown of, of when to use which type of video. Thank you. And um, do you have any examples of, of businesses, you know, that might, that might be Googleable um, for people to go and have a look at some good examples of, say, brand videos or good examples of, of information videos um, or conversion videos? Are, are, there, are, there, are there some brands or businesses that you can point to that have some good video examples of those? Yes, well, I've worked with some clients and then that we have implemented the full strategy. Uh, and I would suggest you go to a company called Ensure. Uh, they are insurance brokers. Oh, uh, yeah. So what they do, um, what we did, we produced like the, a profile video and then we did case studies for different industries. Okay, yeah. Um, very, very, um, that's a great example because they, 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 they work with specific industries within the insurance industry, like transport companies, real estate companies, you know, uh, food manufacturers. Okay, cool. So how do you spell that? Ensure, like E-N-S-U-R-E, if we just Google that. It's N-S-U-R-E. Oh, so just the letter N, Ensure. Yes. Okay, so if you... Okay. They did the whole, they did like educational videos for four months, like 52 videos that wow. they use social media to share just yes, value. Okay, great. I'll, um, I'll try and track those down and stick those in the, the show notes. So um, you've said that, that um, the best type of videos, which I would agree for social media, are those kind of educational or, or information videos. A common question, because they're adding value, um, a common question that I get, I'm sure that you get, how long should we be making our videos? Now, if I'm talking specifically about social media and, and I realise that YouTube is very different from Instagram, very different from Facebook, and they might all have different recommended lengths. What's yes. your answer to that question when you're asked how long should my videos be on social media? I think that... To answer that question, we need to know first that social media is a social platform, right? We go to social media, no matter which social media platform, we go there to socialize. We don't go to LinkedIn or to Facebook to learn something. Every time you want to learn something and you want to watch a video for it, we go to YouTube. Yeah. Right? So YouTube could be considered a learning platform. So when, we, when we're talking about producing educational videos for social media, those videos, they must be social, which means they have to be short, yeah. right? Uh, so my advice for like LinkedIn and Facebook is to keep a video no longer than 90 seconds. 
I think that two minutes is the maximum length wow. for in yeah. case you uh, and then I get the challenge from my client saying, well, but I have so much to say. I say, well, you have to understand that these educational videos are produced with the context of a marketing strategy. So you are educating your audience, but at the end of the day, this is marketing. Yeah. So the educational videos should give your audience insights about something they haven't thought about before. Yes. So then they want to learn more. And to learn more, they will contact you because you are the one giving them the insight. So don't, it's not a proper educational piece. It's an insightful piece about that topic that you are an expert that will help your ideal client solve a problem. Yes. But then, if you, if you really want to produce a longer educational video, like five-minute video, put that video on YouTube. Yeah. Okay? Uh, and you can direct people, you know, to listen to the full version, go to my YouTube channel. And then you can create a proper training channel on YouTube with five-minute videos, ten-minute videos, because people will, will go there to find information. Yes. Yeah. And, and in my experience, Instagram TV seems to be that a space for those longer um, form videos as as well. They don't seem to be as educational as as YouTube because I agree. You know, every every how to video on on YouTube is um, is generally at least you know five to ten minutes in length. And but but so are a lot of the Instagram TV videos. But they don't tend to be as this is how. Like some of them actually tend, seem to be quite conversational. Um, even though they're not, they're, they're still one way. But it's a it's a very different and quite an emerging space. So I'm I'm still really kind of trying to get my head around it. Have you done a lot with Instagram TV? No, I don't do much with that. But there is a great growing you know uh, opportunity with them as well. But again, it all depends on your audience. Yeah. Right? So I, I always say to my clients because they say, where should I put my videos? So, well, where is your Where's audience? Your audience. Yeah. LinkedIn? Do they consume Facebook? Do they consume Instagram? Yeah. So different audiences. Like in my case, I work mainly with corporates, with professional and even small businesses in the, but in the corporate industry, professional services. Yeah. So professional services, they focus more on LinkedIn. Uh, no, many professional services are, you know, exploring Instagram because there are not many professional services consumers, you know, and that That's platform. Right. Yeah. It's very important to identify where is my ideal client. Yeah, 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 that's, that's absolutely right. Um, okay, that's a good answer. So essentially that was, you know, no more than a minute and a half or two minutes but if it's on, on Facebook. I think if you want your video to be consumed in Instagram in the news feed, I don't think it can be longer than 60 seconds anyway. And if it is, that's when it will go over to Instagram TV. LinkedIn, minute and a half. Um, and I know LinkedIn has a has a limit. You can't actually upload anything longer than 10 minutes to, to LinkedIn. So if you've got that longer form video where you're actually showing someone how to do something or training them, um, YouTube is is the spot for, for that. But as Kristen said, not if your clients aren't there or your target audience aren't there. Work out where they are and, and where they're consuming their content, first of all. That's an excellent answer. Um, quickly on, on the link. What about for those brand and promotional videos on, on your website? Uh, should they be that kind of minute and a half, two minutes as well, or, or can they be longer? Yeah, I mean, for a company video, again, we want it around 90 seconds, two minutes maximum. Okay. okay. Uh, and, and again, we are not, one of the mistakes we make is that we want to share everything about us. And no one really cares about us, you know? And we need to, and that's a very humbling experience when we need to go through reviewing the content because people want to know, you know, who you are and why they should do business with you. And we need to be, the, the shorter the message, the more effective the message, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so your, your company video, no more than two minutes. Yeah. And then for uh, client testimonials videos or case studies, yeah. Uh, I would suggest no more than three minutes. Okay. And here, these videos can be longer, right? And there is a reason for that. Because if, if, if we follow the process, right, I consume your educational videos. So I know you are the expert. Yep. I go to your website. I consume your company video. 
right? So now I know that you are the expert. I know who you are, and I know why I should do business with you. Yeah. Now I want to know if I if I can trust you. So for that, if I consume a educational video of someone who looks like me, like my business, I will spend more time trying to know all the details from that video to know if I'm going to give you my money to use your services. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm already invested in the process. Now, the, the, the client testimonial video is a perfect tool to overcome all the objections that someone might have to use your services. Yeah. Because you get your client to talk about those objections in reverse. So how you do that? By asking the question. That's the interviewing skills coming yeah. into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. So, so you mentioned before that, that one of the big mistakes that a lot of businesses use is almost being a little bit too self-indulgent in um, how much it, that information that they include in their videos no matter what the style, what are some of the other mistakes that you see business owners make with their videos? Which type of videos? Oh, any videos in terms of um, information videos that they put out on, on social media, brand videos. What, what are some of the, the mistakes that you see a lot of people make with, with any of them? Well, I guess number one is not thinking about, again, going back to the first question, not thinking about, your ideal client yeah um and then not thinking about the purpose of that video i always say why are you producing this video are you producing this video to get followers to be famous or to engage ideal clients who want to invest their money to buy your services yeah. a completely different um, um different perspective then not understanding the different types of videos the different platforms where we should place these videos, right? People want to increase lead generation producing uh, a corporate video. I say, well, a corporate video will never help you increase lead generation, you know? Or they produce a corporate video for their social media. Or they produce five educational videos and then because they don't get any results, they say video does not work. Yes. Video is a long-term strategy, right? I've been producing videos for my own business for the last eight years, you know, mm. every week for eight years. Wow. Uh, so it's like, it's a long-term thing. You know, you, if you're doing ongoing videos for social media, you have to wait at least six months until you start seeing the result because yeah. people need to get used to the value you are giving. Yeah. So it's a long-term thing. And then we have to cover all the aspects I mean, your lead generation, your brand awareness, and your conversion rate. So all of those videos are important within a, a study. Yeah. Um, what else? Yeah, thinking that authenticity comes with the quality, which has nothing to do with that. Authenticity comes with the message. Yes. You know, if, if you give an authentic message, you know, the quality of your video will just enhance that authenticity. It has nothing to do with, you know, my video is very raw because I do it with my phone when I'm in the gym. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, no, that, makes, yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And um, so speaking of videos and, and them helping, so, so, so as you've described it, it's, it's like an ecosystem. So it's not just about kind of producing those information videos. It's not just about doing one brand video and then ticking the video box for your, for your marketing planning. It's about having, having all of those types of videos all working with each other to move people from brand awareness, as you said, um, and for people understanding that you're an expert in a, in a certain topic, moving them to your website where they find out a little bit more about you, um, to the case study examples and the testimonials where they, they get to trust you a little bit more and then hopefully they buy. So, that, so there's an ecosystem there. What measurements are we using along the way to understand that we are going in the right direction? Because as you said, it could take six months before videos really start to kind of show any, you know, real effect in terms of leads. Let's, let's call leads the, the ultimate outcome. Yes. What are some of the metrics that you look at with a video to see is, are we going in the right direction? Are we, you know, are these videos actually being watched? Are they actually being engaged with? What, what do you look at? 
Well, I mean, here's a, this is a bit tricky because uh, one of the mistakes that, you know, business owners and finance departments make is that they put video in the sales, sales boats, right? Wow. Uh, you think as video is like a sales tool. And video is not sales. Video is marketing. Yeah. And with every or any marketing initiative, is you you won't you will never have an exact exact you know uh, measurement to to see the return on investment. However, as you see long term, you can start measuring the activities on your website, the the, the visits you have, or every time you get a new client, you, you you can ask them how do you find out about us? You know, every time someone signed up for my training, I you know I ask them how do you find out about me? I say well through LinkedIn through your videos. But it's more about the feedback you get from your audience. Yeah. Um, it happens, right? You know, it happened to me. Like, I'm in the, uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was at Woolies, right? And I was buying groceries. And someone came to me and said, you're Christian. You are the guy who makes videos on LinkedIn. Mate, I've been following you for three years. Someone just random. Yeah. I said, the videos work, right? But it, that's the kind of feedback you will get. Uh, but it's all about seeing traffic coming to your website or traffic coming to your social media platforms yeah. or, or the clicks you get through your newsletters and email marketing campaigns. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, that's the lead gen. But what about like what do you measure if people are actually watching? So say, for example, if you've got a one and a half minute video on Facebook, you know, like Facebook will give you the, the metrics of through time, which I think is only a 15 second measurement to, to, to tell you that someone's just watched it 15, 15 seconds. When it actually says video views on Facebook, that's only measuring a three second view. Do you look at that to see if, if people are actually kind of, and how long people are actually watching the video? Or, or for you, is it more about, you know, this is a lead generation tool. Is it generating leads? Well, it's, it's a bit of it's a bit of both, right? I mean, I, I look at the, I look at the numbers, and I think that's important always to look at the numbers. And every platform give you gives you you know some type of metrics. How accurate they are, I'm not sure. Even with with, with YouTube, um, I don't think they are very very accurate. Yeah. It's good to look at the numbers of views, you know, like on, on social media or Facebook, as you said. But also, I mean, you have to balance it. I mean, it's very subjective. Um, look at the, is this generating lead? Is this bringing, you know, bringing, um, you know, traffic to my website? Because at the end of the day, you know, if you put that video every day out there, you know, just by someone seeing that you are doing something with some value, they might not even watch your video. They maybe just watch one video during that week of you and it's always valuable. And then every day you reminded them that you were there giving more value. So even if they don't consume the video, by just scrolling through their feed and they see you there, it's a reminder that you are there and that yeah. you have something to say. So the length in which we actually uh, consume the video, uh, yeah, I mean, it's very subjective. But then that's why the video has to be short because yeah. at the end of the video, my advice is to put a call to action. Yeah. Yeah. Call to action is when you measure as well because you say for more information visit our website yeah. or for more information book a free consultation with me on my website. Uh, if you want to learn more, come to my YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. and then you can yeah. measure those 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 things. Measure the the effect of that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and a and a personal um, I guess a bit of anecdotal feedback based on my experience with video, and I've probably been doing video on LinkedIn, I don't know, probably for about a year now. And I, and I also do it on Facebook as well. And what I found is that um, people will kind of, and, and I'm in a regional area. So the fact that people are coming up to you in Sydney, which is obviously, there's a lot more people in Sydney. So someone's actually recognised you in, in the middle of Sydney. That's pretty impressive. But I live in a regional area where, where you know, obviously there's, there's less people, but I know that, you know, after, after about six months, and I think you're absolutely bang on there, it does take about six months for them to, to actually start really kind of sinking in. But I would notice that people would start coming up to me and just launch straight into conversation. Hi, Jane, you know, da, 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 you know, talking, talking, talking. And they'd be talking about subjects. And I would think I have, abs I have absolutely no idea who you are. I'm pretty sure I've never met you. 
or maybe I have met you and I just can't, you know, I can't remember you, but you seem so familiar with me. And this happened, this kept happening a couple of times and I was starting to think, oh my goodness, you know, I'm getting old and I'm starting to remember all the people that I've, I've starting to forget all the people that I've met. But I actually then realised, I think it was one, one at, you know, at one point somebody came up to me and said, and I think they must have referenced something that was in one of my videos. And it was at that point that I went, oh my goodness, I think these people are seeing me so often in their, in their feeds. And as you said before, at the beginning of the, the interview, you know, it's a, it's a visual, it's auditory and, and, and you know, obviously the, the words. Um, People are actually people actually think that they know me, you know. So people actually think that they've met with me because they've seen me on video so many times. So that kind of no like trust has been amplified or almost fast forwarded to the point where they actually think, yeah, yeah, no, we we've met each other, we know each other, which is incredibly powerful. And, and as we said before, that's that's the power of video, right? Yeah. That's why it's so important to have a face. And your face is you are the leader of the business. You have to be there because you are building trust with, with your ideal client just by giving them value. Uh, it's, it's so powerful. I, I was filming with a client two weeks ago, right? Uh, we're doing like one of those, you know, very social distance filming. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, it's been three months since we have been doing these videos every week and I, I haven't got any leads out of it. So, well, you have to wait. It's a six-month process. We discussed this, right? And, and we're going through COVID-19, which is like no one is buying anyway. Mm. So he was preparing, and then he said, well, I need to attend a call with a client. So we, we, we had a break, you know, for like half an hour. He spoke with his client, and then he came back and said, you know, I was talking to my client, and he was telling me about the videos he had been watching on social media about 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 me and about the services and he just inquired something just because he saw you know something they mentioned they triggered something yeah. and they were telling me how how professional they look and how they made me look so professional and as an expert which i am and then he was like oh this is working yeah you know you <laughs> haven't spoken with enough people yet to know who is watching out there yeah but yeah. it's incredible like you go to one of the working events and then i get people reaching me from everywhere saying, hey, I know you because you are the video guy from social media, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. And sometimes it might be subconscious, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, there'll be, there'll be circumstances where people go, I know you, I just know your face, I feel like I've met you. And again, you know, now I'm inclined to think, I think it's because you've seen me on Facebook, you know, you've seen my video and you've heard my voice. So when you actually meet me in person, I seem familiar. And that, you know, that's exactly what we want to do with that, with that part of our marketing is, is take people from that no like trust, um, you know, on that no like trust version and, and that no like trust journey, should I say. Um, and I think that's what video does really, really quickly. So, um, yeah, look, I, I love, those, love those stories and examples. So, now, Christian, I have um, attended a couple of your courses. Um, I actually attended them face to face in Sydney. They were full day workshops. Um, I found them so useful and insightful, and all the information that you give um, is is like incredibly generous. And there's a lot to to work through. Um, can you? You're still delivering these during social distancing. Can you tell us a little bit about these, these courses? Yeah, so right now we are not allowed to run any of those courses. So we move the full, full day training into a online session. So Great. we're doing this training on an ongoing basis. Like right now is a weekly basis. We might go, right now is in a weekly basis. We might, we might move into a you know, fortnight basis. But basically the course, you know, we cover pretty much everything we discussed today in a much deeper level. So right. the course is designed for any or every attendee, you know, to, to get a full understanding uh, of video, how video works, uh, all the different areas that they can implement it in their own businesses. And then we develop a strategy together for the next 52 weeks, you know, uh, for the next 12 months. And then we cover, you know, all different elements on how you can make your videos yourself. So currently it's a half a day course and we deliver that on an online basis. 
Perfect. Fantastic. And um, so if people want to reach out to you, find out more about this course or maybe see some of those fabulous LinkedIn videos that you were, were talking about, where can they find you? Well, you can go to my website. It's uh, creativecreations.tv or you can find me on, on LinkedIn as well. You know, I'm very active on LinkedIn and always sharing educational videos uh, and always engaging with, with, with content as well. And so should they just search for you um, personally, Christian Trujillo, or should yeah. they go to Creative Creations? No, yeah, that's my name. Um, um, I share content through, I, I have my company page, but I, yeah. most of the engagement I do is through my, my own personal work. Okay, fantastic. And I'll put those links in the show notes as well. Kristen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, that's just been such a... Um, informative interview and and once again you know i always learn something from these podcasts and i've picked up some extra tips today so thank you so much for that christian really appreciate your time thank you jen i really appreciate you having me here and, and you know good luck to everyone who is producing their own videos you know video is a great opportunity for all of us you know especially during these times to connect and engage with, with our clients. So it's, it's very important to embrace it. And if you are on the line there saying, I don't know, well, do it because video is not going anywhere and it's going to become more and more important. So, Absolutely. I yes. couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> Thanks, Christian. Thank you, Have a good day. Fantastic tips from Christian. I love Christian's relentless passion for treating your marketing videos seriously. I think his points around showing up as the best version of yourself are really powerful. Dress and prepare for your videos as you would prepare for an important client meeting. I love that. Prioritize professional development of your videos where you can, especially for promotional and branding videos. I also loved his three ingredients for a successful marketing video, a strong and clear message, effective look and feel, and a quality production. But don't let any of this put you off video. All of the above is achievable with a smartphone. However you plan to produce your videos though, just do your best to produce the best quality content that you can. You can still look professional and have a relevant and valuable message. Just make sure that the lighting and the audio is good without the need for, without the, the need for a, a video production crew. You don't need um, the video production crew to, to kind of just pay attention to how the light and the, the audio is. So if you do want to start investing in a bit of DIY equipment, make sure you check the show notes for the link to the do-it-yourself equipment that Christian talks about. I know I have purchased some of his equipment for my video production. Also, if you are enjoying all of the small business marketing insight that is being shared out on the How To Do Marketing show, please be sure to hit subscribe and leave a rating and review. This helps other people discover the How To Do Marketing show. Also, we'd love you to join the discussions about small business marketing in the How To Do Marketing Facebook group. This is an opportunity to tap into a community of other like-minded business owners, ask questions, run ideas past people and discuss topics that arise in the How To Do Marketing show. So until next time, happy marketing.